when we finish here, if you want to ask us some well, questions personally, you can do that. Um, a couple things. One is is that what makes ballistic missiles and nuclear weapons so incredibly dangerous in North Korea and also Iran is that they are likely not persuadable by deterrence, which has held the world in nuclear peace given the number of nations that now hold nuclear weapons. In other words, you use a nuclear weapon on your adversary, you're, de you're de inviting the destruction of your entire regime. And we both know the motivation, in theory, for both of these regimes to have nuclear weapons is for the preservation of the regime. Well, if that's the case, then why do they want intercontinental ballistic, ballistic missiles that would have nuclear weapons fixed them so they can fire them someplace? That makes these regimes very, very dangerous. And obviously, North Korea is much closer to this, and that's why our president is consumed by it. So that we have to keep in the back of our mind how dangerous Iran can truly be because they may not be persuadable by deterrence. I think that is true, the case. And it makes it a very, very dangerous country, as Senator Lieberman mentioned. The second thing is Iran's steadfast objective towards regional domination, it, it, it will be more aggressive. And we've already seen that. Remember, since the JCPOA began and when we finalized it in July of 2015, Iran has successfully propped up the Assad regime, has absolutely directed the strategy of killing the people in the towns, villages, and areas from which the Syrian opposition forces come from. That is the primary target. They wholesale kill people. That is job one. And when the Russians came in with their penetrator bombs, they began to blow up the hospitals which they were building underground because they destroyed 72% of, the of all the hospitals. And the Russians used their penetrator bombs to blow up those hospitals systematically. The, the, it was the Iranians that came up with the idea of a starvation campaign for entire neighborhoods. We we'll don't have to drop bombs in, just don't let any food in. And I can show you pictures of people that look like something out of Auschwitz, that the bodies are laid out in warehouses. So the Iranians are steadfastly moving towards regional domination. They, they have, as I mentioned before, they have propped up this regime successfully. Since the JCPOA, they invaded using their proxies, Yemen, and they toppled the regime. Now, thankful to Mohammed bin Salman uh, from the, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Mohammed bin Zayed from the Kingdom of uh, UAE, both young people, both determined to deal with this threat, they have pushed back on it. We don't know where that outcome is going. What Iran wants, just so you understand strategically, there's nobody stupid in Iran. You know where Yemen is. They want the southern part of Yemen, a Navy base right there. There already is a base there. That's where we had our, the United States had its ship blown up. At that Navy base is the entrance to the Suez Canal. And they will put their anti-ship missiles and their mines in that area so they can impact strategically world trade as they impact strategically the Persian Gulf and the Gulf of Hamuz. These objectives are not going to change. They will take the $100 billion windfall they got from the United States in removing sanctions and use most of that money, some of it certainly domestically, but most of that money to march towards these regional objectives. They are steadfast about it, and we're going to be on a major collision course, I think, with the Trump administration, because they will not back off.